So this is one entrepreneur's journey supported by SAFE. Now, a lot of you are thinking, are you nuts? SAFE, this enormously huge method that's so unagile, uh, you might be surprised. I, uh, I'm a former member of the SAFE framework team. I was uh, largely responsible for agile product delivery and lean portfolio management. And I was the principal author of the current SAFE LPM, APM, and POPM courses. So I have some influence in this. And uh, let's see how this is going to work. See what you think. So a little bit about me, serial entrepreneur, philanthropist at Every Voice Engage Foundation, um, have made contributions to the Agile Alliance, the Scrum Alliance. I've written four books. I'll probably write another book sometime soon. Um, uh, and having a lot of fun in Agile. Um, so what do you need to have a good startup? What's a good start to a startup? Well, you need a compelling problem, uh, large enough market because you need to make money. You need something that's desirable, viable, feasible, and sustainable. You need a caring and competent team because startups are not for the faint of heart. You need a pinch of humility and a whole kilo of crazy. Because if you're going to do this thing called startup, it's kind of crazy. Well, I think we've got that. We're here to fight financial inequality at First Root around the world by a participatory budgeting app built for schools, for kids, with a caring and competent team. And uh, for those of you who wonder if I'm crazy, I promise you when I introduced Innovation Games at the 2003 Agile Conference, everyone thought I was nuts. But they've worked out. So now how are you going to build your startup? Well, there's a lot of things you need to do. You need to understand your customers. You need to think about design thinking. You need to talk about, well, what are my investments in my architecture? You need to collaborate and plan, experiment. You probably want to use the lean startup. And wait a minute, you've got, you've got investors. You've probably got to make some form of an economic forecast because you probably want to pay yourself and you probably want to pay your employees and they probably want to be paid. So these are all kind of important things. Wait, isn't all of that actually in SAFE? Huh, what is the center of SAFE? In the exact center of SAFE, we put the customer. Everything we do is revolving around the customer. And all of these elements are in SAFE. Now, there's four configurations of SAFE, and that's an important thing that people often miss. And people often look at SAFE from the perspective of either the full configuration or the large solution configuration. The vast majority of implementations of SAFE don't need the large solution or the full configuration. But what is the sweet spot for me of SAFE? And one, the one that really creates the best outcomes is the portfolio configuration, especially for startups. Now, if you're familiar with SAFE, I'll talk about certain things, but if you're not, I'll kind of do a light overview. In the portfolio configuration of SAFE, we talk about our our business model canvas or the lean canvas. We talk about strategic themes. We use estimation. We have a variation of the lean startup, the safe lean startup cycle, which focuses on uh, the experiments that we're running as a startup. We also want to uh, time and plan our releases according to market events and market rhythms. I'm building software for schools in the North American school market. It doesn't make sense for me to do a release in June. There's no kids in schools in June. But what I want to do is prepare for the market window that's coming. And every market responds to market events and market rhythms. We're going to change how we look at the portfolio vision and instead make it the company vision. We're going to change some of the cadences around participatory budgeting and some of the other portfolio events. And we're going to change participatory budgeting itself to be more inclusive of our external customers. We're going to defer creating a portfolio canvas. I don't need one. I only have one solution. And we're going to defer the investments uh, by solution horizon capability because I only have one offering. I've got a horizon three or a horizon two offering moving into horizon one when I have product market fit. Now, 
I'm going to pick a few things about SAFE that I want to emphasize. I want to emphasize the notion of managed investment contracts. A managed investment contract is a different kind of contracting structure that promotes collaboration between the uh, purchaser and the supplier. Now, you want to use a partner that you know and trust, and you want to give them a fair commitment. So the, the very first uh, uh, consulting firm that I worked with, we, we started with a six-month contract. We worked on establishing a cadence of working together. And because I have a new team, and I'll talk about this a little bit more in a bit, we're running one week iterations. And I personally treat my employees and my contractors exactly the same with respect to education. So when you're working in a startup, it's about education, education, education. You have to educate them on the problem you're solving and you have to educate them on the technology you're using. So we did things like watching the safe um, agile software engineering videos. I gave them the pitch deck of the company uh, to the contractors. We actually ran an internal participatory budgeting process so they would have the feeling and the experience directly of how to run a process. We put a lot of emphasis on agile product delivery. Now, Agile product delivery is the core of SAFE that really focuses on building the right thing the right way. So building the right thing is associated with customer centricity and design thinking. Building the right way is a DevOps and continuous delivery pipeline. Marrying those is looking at your human-centric side, your developer-centric side of developing on cadence, but yet creating an environment where you can release your software at any time, which is the market-centric or customer-centric point of view releasing on demand. Now here, we're gonna keep a lot of stuff. We're gonna keep the Simon Sinek golden circle, which is in agile product management. We're gonna look at some of the strategizer tools from my friend Alexander Osterwalder and team, especially the value proposition canvas. We're gonna work on investing in our DevOps and our implementation. We're also gonna work on our customer journey mapping, our story mapping. We're gonna work on our Kanban systems so that we can have a continuous flow pipeline. And we're gonna work quite a bit on what SAFE calls our architectural runway, making investments in our architecture so that we can have a reliable flow of features. We're gonna change a little bit the notion of design thinking, change the persona canvas a little bit. It's, it's not that I, don't like the safe persona canvas. It's that I wanna tailor those personas into what I need. And I need to change how I'm doing in what safe calls PI planning because I don't yet have a system to do PI planning against. So, so doing PI planning when you don't have an in-flight system is kind of hard. Now, what we're gonna add, because I'm a huge fan of comics, I love to write stories as graphic novels. And so our artifacts are actually written as graphic novels. And we do a lot of usability testing because, you know, I'm a dad. I'm not a high school teenager. So I want to make sure my opinion about our software isn't coloring how we do things. And we really want to test with the kids. Now, before the story map, there is a story. This is an example of one of our graphic novels and everyone on this call, I put into the, uh, the chat where you can get our UX artifacts and you can download them and use them in your training or in your work. But we like to tell the story before the story map. And we prefer to use this through graphic novels. So this is an example of Laura Stonehouse, who's one of our personas, and this is part of her story in using our application. Now, this is something that is, is a lot of tension in the Agile community, right? Because we don't want to do too much big upfront design, but yet I'm testing and I need to test the entire flow, even if I'm not building the entire flow in one iteration. So the way that we do this is that our designers use a tool called Figma. And Figma is kind of like a Miro. Um, there's a couple of different tools. We also use Miro, but we like Figma for our UI design. It allows us to create a different palette, if you will. So what we do in our usability testing is we test the vision. But when we 
when we're working with the team, we, we take the vision and we add a lot more detail for what the flows and the workflows are needed for the implementation team. And this helps our vision and our iteration work come together. Now, I want to point out that your purpose of your retrospectives is to in, improve all of your processes, not just your development uh, code processes. And I would also point out that I don't run a formal retrospective every sprint. I think um, that's more of a scrum centric invention. If you actually look at the Agile Manifesto, it says at regular intervals, the team will do retrospectives, not every sprint. And so what we noticed is that we were using Flutter and we were starting to see some real problems in the design phase when the design would hit the implementation. So what we did was we started and we worked backward and we said, hey, we're using Flutter. How do we feed back to the designers what we're doing in Flutter to make it more efficient? And what we found was that at times our designers were doing really, in a sense, overly beautiful designs. So here was the original design for the ideation screen. And this turned out to be really, really hard to implement in Flutter. And it was not the skill of the developers. It was just that Flutter didn't give us the capabilities that we were looking for. So we moved from a graphic image to a list component, but then we tailored the list component. So we ended up with actually something that tested better because here you can see it's only ideation, but you don't see any other words associated with what's coming. And you, you can see that the iconography was here a little abstract, where here we made the iconography a little bit clear, but we've also added some text. Now, the benefit of this is that it makes it more clear to the user and it's using Flutter components. So we found through our usability that educating the team a little bit more on Flutter and bringing that back to the designers helped us create a more sustainable solution and a more uh, effective process. Now, this is an example of where we are. This is the student experience. Uh, for those of you who use social media, you can see that there's a lot of social media design cues. And then this is how refinement and voting. And again, it's a very beautiful process. It's designed to be very easy to use. And the students who are using this have reported uh, quite a lot of positive feedback through this process. Now, when you have no solution, it is all runway. And I want to reinforce that safe return refers to the term architectural runway. And architectural runway is implemented by an enabler capability that makes future features easier. So we're starting from scratch. And so one of the questions when you're starting from scratch is, well, what cloud platform should we use? Should we use Google? Should we use Azure? Should we use Amazon? What we ended up choosing was Heroku. Now, this is sometimes where you want to look at the experience of your team. And sometimes the experience of your team is going to help you design or choose that Uber architecture. Our team had experience with Amazon, so it was a relatively easy choice. And by the way, this is not a uh, 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 somehow disparaging the Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure. They're fine cloud platforms. It just was an easier choice for us to look at the experience of the team in making that choice. Now, when you have no solution, it is all runway. So you've got to trust your experience. I've built for a long time uh, global applications. So I knew that we wanted to be internationalized so I-18N is internationalization and L-10N is localization. I knew we wanted to support multiple languages right from the start. I knew I wanted a cross-platform client, hence choosing Flutter. I knew I wanted a gorgeous UI, hence investing in usability testing. I knew we wanted an API-driven model with an event-sourced architecture based on patterns. And we also know that there's many important regulations associated with data and security that we also wanted to manage. All of those are enablers in architectural runway. Now we don't have a PI zero, right? So how do you, how do you take from dead scratch start into a cadence-based development? Well, the way I like to do it is 
as I said earlier, help the team understand the problem, make sure they're aligned on the mission, choose your Uber architecture, and now we invest in the data model and then we spike it. We design the UI vision and then we spike it. We design the API and we spike it. And notably absent, there's no like zero, we just start with iterations. Now, a lot of it, the community has centered on a two week iteration duration. Some teams do three, a very small number of teams do four, but notice that we actually shortened our iteration cycle to one week to maximize feedback, especially with a globally distributed development team. I've got teams, uh, I've got members of my development team in India, Mexico, and the United States. And so we need also more opportunity to come together to build a sense of teamwork when the team is distributed. I am a huge fan of patterns. I love the work of Martin Fowler and David Hay. And we used a lot of their guidance in creating the actual patterns for how we manage our data at first root. We also did a lot of work on custom state models. So this is an example of a custom state model in Miro that our team put together so that we can understand the state machine of a pro, uh, proposal from students. Now there's a few more notes that I'd like to share and then we'll open it up for Q&A. Um, we talk about sunk costs in Agile and in SAFE, but the reality is it's not a sunk cost, it's a sunk emotions. Money doesn't have emotions, but people do. And those sunk emotions are where things can get hard. So we started with React, it didn't meet our needs, then we switched to Flutter, and then we actually had to design a slight update to our uh, process so that the designers were using more Flutter compatible items. We explored building a REST API and then we eventually switched to GraphQL. We changed our company name. So this, our original name was Tilladin, and we joked that we're a startup and our and even our logo gear was broken on the first time we, we ordered mugs for the team, right? And we dealt with some really nasty performance issues. It turned out that uh, Heroku has some interesting configuration uh, requirements. And if you get it wrong, you your performance is gonna be um, not very good. Um, now our first release was really incomplete, right? When we released the first version of our software, students, couldn't, students could create proposal, but they couldn't even vote. But we implemented a CICD pipeline. We put a lot of emphasis on what SAFE calls release on demand, which is the ability to put software into production efficiently. And within three months of work, our app is now complete and we're now building on and extending it. Um, so startups are sure are fun. We know our work matters a huge, if you wanna read a book that's gonna change your world, read the spirit level. And what these authors did was they looked at every social index that matters and compared the index of health and social problems with economic equality. And they found that the more unequal the society is economically, the worst the society performs. So in the US, we are the world's most unequal society, and we have the lowest levels of trust, the highest levels of obesity, the greatest degree of mental illness, the highest incarceration rate. It's just awful. So when I was looking for my next startup to start, I really wanted to try and choose something that would create the greatest economic good for the largest number of people. Uh, we know students are loving our work and we're very thankful to have SAFE uh, to help guide our efforts. I know that one of the questions people might ask is, well, why aren't you using Kanban or why aren't you using Scrum or why aren't you using some other method? Well, the answer is simple. I need to add all of the stuff that SAFE has to those other methods to have customer centricity, to have design thinking, to have processes to make really good economic decisions and create economic models. So rather than adding those, I would prefer to start with the method that has them and then tailor that method to meet our needs. Mm -hmm.